Hi everyone, welcome to JD Gardens. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Please support the channel by planting that subscribe button. And if you're already a viewer, welcome back. Well, we got a special episode for you today. I was out here working in the garden, putting together a planter bed, and I've gotten so many questions uh, uh, from people asking about how to build one that I figured, uh, let me just uh, uh, pull out the camera and show you right now. But we're not gonna build any kind of planter bed today. We're gonna build a Frankenstein planter bed. So stick around. So when it comes to planter beds, there's all kinds of materials that you can use. There are composite ones, which, which are great. They tend to be a little more expensive, but they'll never rot and they'll keep their color pretty well. Uh, some people I've seen them use cinder blocks around the perimeter to keep the, the dirt in. Or you can obviously use wood, which is what we like to do. Now, um, whether you're using pressure treated wood or regular pine, what we're going to show you, you can use either. Now, when I say uh, when I talk about using, uh, making a Frankenstein planter bed, let me explain. Um, if you're like me and you do a lot of construction work around your property or redo your gardens or maybe you redid a deck or maybe you found wood uh, that a neighbor was throwing out, you're gonna have all different kinds of pieces and sizes and they might not necessarily work for the size planter bed that, you're, that you wanna build. The planter beds that we're gonna build are about 18 inches deep and about 16 feet wide over that we're gonna do in, uh, in front of uh, Garden East, our can of garden. So um, I obviously don't have 16 foot pieces of wood here. So what, what we mean by Frankenstein is that we're gonna piece them together to you, so none of the wood goes to waste. And we're gonna try to make it look as good as we can. So, cause you know, we don't wanna look unsightly having too many uh, connectors together. Now. One way of doing that is uh, what we did here is I actually went out and I did purchase one piece of wood uh, that's going to be the front face front plate of the planter bed. And then everything else I'm going to stitch together from these pieces of wood. Now, if you, you don't have to do the front, uh, this is just going to be in front of garden east, so we wanted it to look as nice as possible. But, you know, once this all starts graying, you probably wouldn't see the connectors that we're going to use. And, uh, you know, I understand the, the cost of wood right now is extremely expensive, but they are coming down a little, a little bit. So we decided to go with the new piece for the front. And, uh, you know, with the cost coming down, it actually only uh, cost me one of my kidneys and not both. So that's not bad. Uh, but all kidding aside, um, the purpose with wood being as expensive it is, you want to try to reuse as much as possible. So uh, what we're going to do is we have our 16 foot piece right here, right? And we have some other pieces and I've already started cutting them together. So this is the longest piece, one of the longest pieces I had that was, wasn't warped. So there, and I already cut another piece and I'm only going to do one seam here, but you know, you can do as many as you want. Now, what I did is I cut it to length. Make sure it's uh, perfect. So you can see I measured it already for the video. <laughs> so now what will this, this will be the front piece. So that's all you're going to see in the back. You'll never see it because there'll be uh, once I put the uh, metal plates in here to hold it together. You're never going to see it once it's filled up with dirt and you'll never know it's there. And no, will, ne no, neither will anyone else. So what you want to do is grab a couple of uh, drills. I have some screws here and you want to get a good uh, screw, not too big, not any deeper than your uh, piece, uh, your your wood, and uh, make sure it's galvanized. It's outdoor. The plate too. You want to make sure they can withstand the outdoors, so you don't have a problem. And this plate is about uh, uh, um, uh, five inches by uh, three and a half inches. So when I put it together, it'll uh, hold it nice and tight. We're going to do it both sides. Let me stop and let me bring the camera a little bit closer. So the next part is really easy. Let me just uh, switch out my bit here. So what a flat plate is, if you see, I have, it's a flat plate. It has a ton of different holes in it for the screws to go into. So I'm going to put it right dead in the center. There are five holes in this particular one. And uh, this is pretty standard. You get this. I got this at Home Depot, so not a big deal. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll start on one side. Okay. Set the first one. Okay, and then 
you know, you just kind of want to make sure you keep it nice and tight together. Okay, perfect. Try to find some kind of pattern for how you do it. <laughs> Don't get too close to the middle because uh, what's be the point? Now, one side won't cut it because when you lift it, it'll just bend over. So you got to turn it around. And like I said, don't worry what the seam looks like. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna grab another flat plate. You wanna do both, unless you have a really heavy gauge uh, piece of metal, but uh, you know, I didn't wanna go that expensive, so I got a simple, but this is fine, because I've done this a lot of times. Uh, so, okay. Okay, and there you go. Now you have this flat plate. You see, I got a solid piece of wood here. Now, of course you can see this now, but like I said, when it's inside the planter bed or behind it, you'll never see it. It'll be filled up with dirt. Now, it might look a little unsightly if you had it in the front, which is why we're doing a new piece of wood. So, it's as long and it's perfect because it's really not taking any weight. It's gonna be flat on the ground, so it's really just holding it together and you'll never notice. Now, depending, let me grab these, depending on how deep you're gonna make your planter bed, uh, we're gonna make them about 18 inches deep, so we already pre-cut these, they're 18 inches deep. Uh, so the overall planter bed will be uh, 18, 19, 21 inches because you have the three quarter inch that's gonna be on this side and this side to hold it. So, but we want it the inside 18 inches. So uh, let me show you the next step, which is an important step that a lot of people skip when putting it together a planter bed. Um, so let me bring the camera over to the end. So when you're gonna fasten the uh, pl a planter bed together, um, you can use regular screws. Uh, I tend to use uh, something a little heavier duty just because the amount of weight that's going to be in it. And so I use a bolt. Uh, I like to use for a smaller planter bed. It's about two and a, uh, it's a quarter inch bolt. You can go thick, thicker if you want, but I don't think you really need it. Two and a half inches long and you can go longer if you want, but I don't really think you need it. Um, and um, we're going to use that together in combination with a washer to help hold uh, uh, help the bolt from getting too close into the wood and I'll show you that in a second but the, the part that a lot of people skip and that's pre-drilling um, the wood see when you're using a bolt especially a thick bolt I mean somewhat thick it's quarter inch into a piece of wood your wood will start splitting so it's very important for you to pre-drill it with a bit about half its size or even a little smaller you don't want to use the same size or the uh, the uh, a bolt won't have any any wood any meat to grab onto so use it very thin uh one just enough that it's it's like a pilot uh for it so um what i like to do <coughs> when i'm uh measuring out i just grab a measure i measure the half the uh from the edge i measure uh, three quarters inch because that's half of the wood because the wood is about um the, uh, let me show you <laughs> the wood is about one and a half so i do about three quarter inches in that would take me right to the middle of the wood so the, the way the planter bed is gonna be like this on the ground, which I'll show you in a second. So, so I go about a three quarter inch in and one inch down. I mark my holes. Do you see that? You can be a little more detail. And then I just uh, pre-drill. And it's real simple. You can go right all the way through. So like I said, when I come in with the, when I come in with the bolt, it's not gonna split the wood. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now here's my wood. 
And here's this. Let's see if we can get the camera in range. Okay. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, so, this is what the planter bed's gonna look like. So now when you're assembling it, you're gonna wanna try to get the corners as square as possible. So now you can just eye it and kind of use your finger to kind of keep it level. But a nice little tool to have is this jig and uh, it's actually a clamp, but it's meant for 90 degrees. And I'll show you how it works. It's really kind of cool. I like to use it a lot. Have a quick release or you screw it down little by little. And what it does, it locks the wood in place. So when you kind of line it up the way you want it, you, you clamp down one side and then you just make sure the other side is at the right height. Once you lock it down, that's it. Now it's a perfect 90 degree. You make sure your bottom lines up and you're good. Now I'm gonna do this in the front as well, but let me just start this first one. So I have my lag bolt here. Uh, I like to use galvanized because, you know, it's going to be outdoors and there's all different kind of washers. This one has a little teeth in it and that's to hold it in place so it doesn't spin. I'll, I'll leave some links to all this below, uh, but uh, regular washers are fine. And I like using a washer because as you go deeper into the wood, you don't want it to uh, uh, get lodged in there too much. So I'm just going to start this side and then I'll show you in the front. Okay, grab that. So two of them is I find for a planter bed this size is fine. Sometimes when I use a, a deeper wood, like 10 inches high or 12, then I'll use more. Okay, now I have a good spot to work on. You see how that is? Perfect, nice and square, don't have to worry. Now let me show you the front end of the camera, but I just kind of needed a base. Move your tag. Okay, so you have the clamp again. See how it works? It works on all, both sides. I'm gonna lock it, the one into place. Make sure. Okay, lock the one side down. Then I'm gonna make sure the other side's square with it. Might have to come up a little bit. Let me lock this side down, that's the higher one. And this one. Okay, perfect. So now, as I said, uh, let me just look at it. Close. Okay. You can fumble around with this as much as you want. It's a planter bed, so it's not like it's precision woodwork. So grab my well, bolt, grab my washer, now, since it's pre-drilled, like I said, I don't have to worry about it uh, splitting the wood. And then I don't have to worry about pushing the bolt too far in because the washer is going to stop it, which is nice. And these uh, washers are coated for outdoor, so they won't rust out on me. it this clamp is a lifesaver moves quickly especially i'm on my driveway so it's kind of slopes down this way so but you see what it is nice and tight that ain't going anywhere so we're going to do the other side uh, but one note uh to do and let's just bring it over to the middle there all right so i have both sides secured and this is nice and sturdy and uh it's uh, almost like a planter bed. <laughs> it's almost a finished planter bed. But uh, one thing uh, that I've learned from experience, when you're making a planter bed this size, uh, I'd say anything over eight feet, maybe even less, um, once you start putting dirt in the center, uh, it's going to bow out. Uh, no matter what, it's just uh, it doesn't matter how thick the wood is because just a lot of dirt in there, so it's gonna bow. So I always like to do a support in the center. So I have another piece, uh, 18 inches, and what I do is since it's 16 foot, I measure eight feet, and I already have it pre-drilled here, and 
once this is in there, I'm basically kind of making two planter beds, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's going to support it and it's going to stop it from bowing out. Uh, trust me, you want to do this because the last thing you want is to fill it up and see your planter bed bowing out. It's going to look terrible. So uh, <clears throat> uh, it's already pre-drilled, like I said. Um, I'll just measure it, get your speed square and uh, perfect 90 degree. Uh, get it to where you want. Make sure it lines up with your hole. Uh, use the clamp again. So let me set this in place, uh, lock this down. Okay. Make sure we're at 90 degrees. Yep, perfect, okay. I'll show you on the other side. Let me just get this side going. It's a simple step, but it's, it's extremely important. Uh, it would just, you don't want your beds bowing. Okay, so that's obviously totally secure. Grab your speed square, and a speed square is a perfect 90 degree. It's, it's, uh, you don't have to do anything with it. It's just already set, so that's why it's called speed. So when you're, <coughs> when you're working, <coughs> you can measure perfectly. <coughs> and speedy. So that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, sorry, let me get this in here. So I'm gonna clamp down the one side. I nudged it a little bit, make sure it's perfect. Clamp it down. Okay. Grab another bolt. Again, I already have it pre-drilled. Come over here. is it you have yourself from several pieces of wood a frankenstein <laughs> planter bed uh see kind of looks like a frankenstein stitch there that's why i call it that but obviously i only used two pieces because i had some larger sizes but you know me well enough by now that if i only had a bunch of small pieces you'd see a hundred flat plates here but uh, we didn't have uh, the need for that, so it's fine. And uh, like I said, this is gonna be in front of Garden East, so we wanted to look as nice as possible. So we, we did spring for the one piece in the front, and that's all you're gonna see. You're never gonna see any of the old wood in the back or any of the Frankenstein seams. So I think I'm gonna grab Jackie, and we're gonna, uh, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll bring you over to Garden uh, East, and I'll show you, uh, uh, right in front of Garden East, I'll show you where we're going to set up the planter bed, and I'll have Jackie help me put it in place. All right, so we're here in front of uh, Garden East, and this is where we're going to be putting our planter bed, 16-foot planter bed, and another one over there. Now... Before I put the planter bed here, I have to do a little ground prep here. Uh, so I want to get rid of some of the grass. Now, uh, you can uh, grab a hoe and dig it up or a shovel, but uh, it's okay. I'm going to be using a weed barrier on the bottom. So all I do really is I come with my weed whacker and I kind of trim everything down to the ground. And a good uh, tip, and let me show you, come a little closer, is I grab the, plant, the uh, front edge of the planter bed and I use it as a straight edge. This way I can bring my weed whacker right to it and it gives me a nice straight line. And there's a, still a little bit of grass left there, but who cares? Once the, once the um, weed barrier is there and all the weight of the sand, it'll, I don't have to worry about anything. And it's certainly not going to grow through this weed barrier. Um, one thing, <laughs> by uh, using a weed whacker, it does make a spectacular mess. And uh, it made uh, a bunch of mess inside Garden East, which I'm going to have to clean up, but that's okay. Still uh, a lot quicker and easier than using the shovel. So... Uh, or a hoe for that matter. So I'm gonna cut some uh, weed barrier to the length and then we'll bring the uh, planter bed over and then uh, we'll fill it up with dirt and uh, get ready for planting.
Okay, so I'm starting to lose the light now, uh, but we're just about done with this planter bed. Uh, as soon as I, uh, after I put in all my uh, soil, what I like to do is get some piece of wood, uh, straight edge, uh, deeper than the planter, and I just run it across, and I fill in all the low spots, tamp it down, and make sure I have just enough dirt, and if I have too much in there, then I pull out, or like I said, I tamp it down some more. So it looks really good. I'm really happy with this. Nice and clean. So, uh, like I said, I'm losing the light, so I'm gonna try to get the other one done tonight. I'm sure Jackie is gonna be, Jackie's gonna be right on my coattails, planting things any minute. I think she's putting uh, geraniums here or something, I'm not totally sure, but uh, let me continue on. Hey there. So it's the next morning, and as you can see, we got our planter beds all done, and uh, I think they look great. And I told you, uh, Jackie wasted absolutely no time. She was here late last night. We had the work lights out here and she was planting all the geraniums and uh, she did a great job as always. And uh, everything, looks, uh, everything looks amazing. Now, since we decided to put these planter beds in, right in front of Garden East, I'm really glad that I, I decided to spring the extra money and uh, go with the new pieces of wood in the front. It gives it a nice clean look and uh, you know maybe event uh, eventually they'll gray over or uh, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll stain them i don't know maybe we'll do something different but it really doesn't matter uh, what we used on the side or especially the back because the front approach no one's going to be paying attention to what's going on back here and no one's ever going to know that we pieced them together from a bunch of smaller pieces so um, why don't i bring you a little closer and i'll show you the frankenstein stitch that we did over here if you can take a look it's right here see that little line there no one's gonna see anything and as you build up the dirt you'll never see the metal piece right there but that's fine but we'll uh, just cover that back up and <laughs> nobody has to know let's take a look at this one over here same thing see once this grays over a little more if I have to there you go but well, like I said, we'll keep it covered up so no one knows. And it really doesn't matter whether you have uh, one or 20 of these. No one's going to be uh, paying attention to the back, especially when the plants all grow in. So uh, definitely a good way of saving some money. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Remember, if you have leftover pieces of wood, save them. If your neighbor is taking apart a deck, Ask them uh, if you can uh, go through and grab the best piece of the wood before they throw it all out. They make great material for planter beds. And don't worry about the different sizes. Remember, you can uh, Frankenstein them together and make yourself a beautiful planter bed and nobody's ever gonna know uh, what you did. And you're gonna save yourself a ton of money. And with the cost of wood these days, you wanna take every advantage that you can get. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave us a comment. We'd absolutely love to hear from you and be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell So from here in uh, Garden East till next time remember Yes, we can uh.